there, thanks for joining me today. My name's Jo and I'm an independent Stamping Up demonstrator based in the UK. A couple of weeks ago I shared this card on my blog um, and I've been asked by um, quite a few people on how I created it. I'm actually running a colouring techniques class in a couple of weeks um, and this is one of the projects that we'll be making and I thought it would be quite a good idea to record a video on how it was done um, both for those that have asked and also for the class attendees so that they can um, refer back to it as necessary. So we're going to recreate it but I'm actually doing it onto a piece of 10 by 10 watercolour paper. Now this is our Fluid 100 um, paper from Stamping Up. It's a cotton based um, watercolour paper so the colour moves really beautifully over the top of it. Um, so you'll, you'll see as, as we start building it up it is a really nice paper. And the reason we're doing it that size is because it's going into some little mini frames. I wanted it to be um, something that was achievable to the class attendees rather than um, something which was, was a bit of a daunting sort of process. So um, that's what we're going to be doing. So the stamp set is actually called Poinsettia Petals. Um, now, um, these images are actually 65% of their full size, so they're quite a lot bigger than this, you'll see as we start going on. Um, poinsettias are obviously um, made up of leaves. They're not actually petals, but um, I will refer to them as petals, no doubt, as we go through because it builds up that ultimate flower. So apologies for that. Um, so this is the image we're going to start with. We're using various colours throughout, so the actual images themselves and the background were done in Sahara sand. The, um, the main colour is cherry cobbler, so that's the main colour of our petals. Um, for the centre I used a little bit of mango melody, a little bit of old olive which also did done the outside leaves and then for the detail in the center um, I've also used a little bit of Merry Merlot so you'll see um, how I build it up as we go along so the first thing I want to do is to take my Sahara sand um, ink pad and I also like to have to hand a piece of scrap paper um, now the purpose of the scrap paper is purely to um, remove some of the ink from the image because although it will disappear into our background I want it to um, to not be first generation ink so I'm going to ink my stamp quite generously because I want it to to you know be quite um quite a prominent ink I'm just going to stamp it off onto paper and then I'm going to just position it where I want it on my card and then I'm going to just stamp it down so I don't know how clearly that shows up on the camera um, but it is quite faint so I want it to be faint so that I can I can see the outside of my leaves but I don't want to be able to, um, to them to be very prominent and what I tend to do as well is I tend to keep the stamp set to hand so that I can see kind of roughly where my petals are going as I'm moving. I'm going to put this, um, it's in front of me, but it is actually out of um, uh, shot of the camera, just not take up any room there. So as I say, the colour we're using is Cherry Cobbler. And what I like to do is to put the ink onto one of my stamping blocks. Um, I do this for two reasons. One, it takes up less room on my desk, so it's quite a handy little um, sort of where I can mix it but also it's um I haven't got my ink pads open for any length of time so that's the reason I do that and I've just got some plain tap water which I washed my brush out in just a, a moment ago so it's a bit pink and some kitchen paper so this is purely just to enable me to either block my um, brush or to wipe it when I've washed it so that's what we need just to get started so what I'm going to do first is to put a wash down onto all of my petals. So um, I'm going to work with them sort of one after the other, um, but I'm going to be skipping ones in between. You'll see what I mean as I start going. Now I just want to mix up some colour just in the corner of my block here. And I want this quite watered down because I want this to be our base. So it needs to be quite light.
Okay, so I'm going to pick up some colour and I'm just going to start by sort of mapping out where my leaves or petals go because obviously some are behind each other and things like that. So I just want to lay this colour down really light. So I hardly had any on my um, brush. Now obviously this particular colour um, obviously spreads a little bit and, and it does um, take a little bit of sort of blending just because it's so dark really but um, don't worry at this stage we're not going to worry too much about blending all I want to do is to get that first layer down so the lighter the better really um, it's going to be darker in this section so this is towards the center of our actual flower so that's what I want to achieve but this top end, I want to be really, really light because this is going to create our shadows eventually. So just, as I say, don't worry too much about it at the moment. Just get that layer down and we're going to build that up as we go. OK, so the next thing I want to do is to, um, um, by the way, these are our water painters that I'm using. Um, normally you would put water into this chamber. I don't use water in the chamber when I'm doing this technique purely because I like to have a bit more control over the water flow. So I just use a normal pot of water and my brush. So um, you could use a normal paintbrush if you wanted to. Um, any, anything, what you're comfortable with, I think, is more important than, than anything else. OK, so now what I want to do is just to start moving around um, my petals. Now, um, you can't always see kind of where all your petals are going. So don't don't worry too much if you find that you're going off kilter a little bit because um, it, it's nature. So it, I'm not too worried about sort of where um, my petals are going. I'm just trying to, as I say, create that base so that I can see sort of how to build them up. And again, I say I use my stamp set as a bit of a sort of reference point just to give me a rough idea um, but I'm not too worried about it if I'm going off the actual pattern itself a little bit now it's quite forgiving watercolor paper because you can um, provided you don't go in too dark you can move it around for quite a long period of time um, and you can even sort of revive it after uh, a little while. So again, I'm not worrying about blending too much. I'm just getting that colour down so that I can see where um, I want to go with it. So again, picking up a little bit more. Um, I think there's a petal there. And I think this one sort of goes behind here. So it's hard to tell sometimes, especially because it is so faint, but I'm not too worried about that. So I'm just working around just one after the other, just till I'm comfortable um, with all my shapes and leaves
Okay, so once I've reached sort of that point where I've met the one from previously, I'm just going to start then adding some colour into those ones in between. So that first one I did has had ample time to sort of dry off. And you'll find as you start adding the colour that this naturally happens. So you start getting a darker edge where the two meet. So that starts building your depth up. Okay, so that's our first sort of layers down. So that's um, that's got our base down. So now we can start building upon that. So this was my first petal I started um, with here. I'm just going to reshape the bottom of that because um, the shape wasn't quite right in my eyes. Um, so I've just reshaped that. And you can see I'm starting to bring in some darker colour. So what I want to do is I've... I've brought in that darker colour but I want to spread this out as far as I can get it to spread really but whilst leaving this nice light area here because um, I want this to be our shadow so this is where our light is falling and this is going to be our shadow so once I've added a little bit in I can then start to build it up a little bit more and as I say, it's layers. So just do a little bit at a time, just building up layers. And if you find, OK, that's enough now. I don't want any more colour laid there for, for the time being. I'm just going to bring in a clean brush. And just give it a quick wash over. And then you can see that that is already starting to, to get some depth into it. I will add some more to this in a moment. I want it to dry now. So again, I'm going to miss one and I'm going to do exactly the same again. So I'm bringing in some more dark colour. Once I feel that it's enough, I just wipe my brush and move along a bit more. So add in a little bit more. Over time, you get to kind of know how much to add or take away. Um, it is practice. And you also know kind of when enough is enough so to stop sort of um, trying to move it. OK, so I'm going to leave that one again. I'll come back. I'll add some more layers onto it in a moment.
so basically this is this how i would continue now to create my um my f finished flower so i would just keep adding layer upon layer until i was happy with the depth of the actual petals themselves and then once i am happy with that i will then come in and add some finer details Okay, so as you can see, I've added um, a fair bit of detail onto this now and it's starting to deepen and we're starting to get that um, colour coming through. Um, you might have noticed I, I lost track of kind of where I was as I was going around. That's what happens. You get kind of lost in it, really. Um, so I just go back to the petals that I miss. It's not it's not a problem. So now I've got to this stage, I'm just going to leave this for a few minutes just to dry just a little bit more I want to add some more depth to it I want to add some more darker sections within but if I do it too quickly then my colors were going to blend and, and become sort of they're not going to sort of stand apart from each other so I'm going to leave that just for a few seconds to dry um, and then I will come back shortly and I will show you exactly um, sort of how I add the more details onto that Okay, so now you can see this has had a really good opportunity to dry. Um, what I want to do now is just to add some of my um, other leaves onto here. So the green leaves that you saw on the original card. 
I'll just pop that back in so you can see. So these are the green leaves that I want to add. Now I'm going to show you a way that I started off doing it with the actual masking technique. Towards the end, I was kind of just creating my own sort of leaves really because they sort of follow a, a natural form. So um, it actually wasn't too bad, but I'm going to show you how I did this anyway so that you can see um, what I would normally do to actually add further detail onto it. So first thing we need to do is to um, create a mask. So what I've done, I've pre-done mine. So all I did was I stamped this onto a piece of Whisper White cardstock, just um, in, um, as you can see, it was a scrap. <laughs> so it's just in Sahara sand. It doesn't matter what color you do it in, just as long as you've cut it. And you want to cut it right onto the actual line of the stamp. So don't leave a little border. You want to do it onto the stamp. And I'm going to line this up onto my flower somehow. There we go. Now you're, you will find that your leaves obviously have changed shape a little bit or they're not quite there. But just as long as you get the general um, coverage, then that is absolutely fine. OK, so now what I want to do is to take my Sahara Sand ink pad and again I want to do this in second generation so if you recall we inked it first and then we stamped it off onto scrap and then using the same thing I'm going to just place this so that I have some leaves peeking out between the petals now don't worry too much if um, you know you're not getting a full so I've got a little one here I've got quite a big one here this one's virtually disappeared so I'm going to come back and do that one again so I just want to add several petals so it doesn't um, as I say it doesn't have to be um, any huge amounts and you can try and do sort of one at a time really because this is so faint it's not really going to show um, if you get it somewhere else because we'll lose that as we do our painting. So don't worry too much. Um, so I've got three there, just stamping off again. And I'm going to just do two over this side. OK, so you can see generally where those leaves are. Um, I might add another one sort of in here, possibly just to add a bit of greenery once I've started. So we'll see how it goes and then we can build it up um, as before. So I've done exactly the same thing. So I have got old olive now onto a um, block and I'm going to start by picking up some colour. Just make sure that my brush is clean from the cherry which it is okay so I'm just going to mix some of this up very very lightly and again just making sure that it's not too dark I want to water it down a little bit we're going to do exactly the same technique um, but we're going to be adding um, a wash first so I'm just going to build up my wash so I'm going in between my petals. Just be a bit careful when you go in between the petals. And we're just going to lay down that first really light colour in just so that that's our base. And then we can come back and build upon that. OK, so again, I'm going to do it here. You can just about see the outline of the actual leaf itself. Going to come in here. I'm not going to worry about this gap here because that's going to be filled with um, some darker reds to when we add our highlights. So I'm not too worried about that. Let's so see, you can add as little or as much as you want here. Um, if you just want one or two green ones, that's absolutely fine. I have got a little bit of green on my card there. I don't know if you can see that. Don't worry if that sort of thing happens because we're going to um, uh, we're going to add our background colour on top of that, so it's not going to show it at all. So don't don't panic if you get a little mark. I must have had a little bit on my finger. Let's say we're just doing this little wash here.
Okay, so they're the ones I stamped. If I want to add a little bit more over here, I can. But what we must remember is that half of this is going to be lost anyway in um, when we actually um, put it into our frame. So I'm not too worried about um, too much at this edge. But I think just in this corner, I may just add a little one. Um, and as I say, I'm just doing this freehand because um, it's just a leaf form. So it's not it's not too um too bad it's it's quite uh you yeah, know it's quite forgiving so as i say the vast majority of that's going to be lost anyway once we actually um stamp it and we're going to have some other shade input in between so um these won't be white gaps they will actually have color in them once we're finished so once i've done that i'm just going to bring in some darker green just like we did with the um, cherry cobbler so I'm just going to bring in some shadows now you mustn't overwork old olive because it has got um, a yellowy base to it so if you overwork it you'll find that it will start yellowing so we just a little bit is fine but we don't want to build up too much so I'm just going to not overwork it so I've added the, a little bit of extra color now I'm just adding some extra color to the other leaves and again I will come back I will add some more once I've uh, done all these Okay, so I've done that once and now going back with even darker sections. Just to create those shadows. So don't forget you want to leave some white space. And if you call white space, it's not actually white, it's just that lighter shade so that it gives it that shadow. As I say, if you find that you want to lighten it even further, you can pick up some of the color by just adding a little bit of water and you can actually blot it if you want to as well. Um, so don't, don't feel that that's your end result. I'm gonna let that dry, move on.
The next thing I want to do is to start adding these darker sections in between our leaves. Um, so I'm going back to, uh, this is Merry Merlot on here. So this is the darker red. So um, it is quite dark, so you do need to be a little bit careful of it just to ensure that um, you're not putting down too much colour. Um, and we don't want it to be too wet on this occasion. So we want it to be um, almost to its sort of exacting colour. Um, as you can see on here, it is really, really dark. So we do need to be just that little bit careful. And what I'm going to do is to, um, if I bring in the original here, you can see sort of the, the shapes that will form in between um, sort of the petals here. So there's sort of a almost a little bit of a teardrop shape but we just want to enhance those depths inside so um, I'm going to start here and as I say my, my brush is actually quite dry I haven't put too much um, uh, water onto it so it, it sort of it will flow but it won't flood if that makes sense so you can see straight away, you can see the depth of those petals is starting to come through. And then once we've done this, we may sort of enhance these a little bit, depending on how they actually look. Now, this one here, I just want to put a little bit down the side because um, obviously this petal is over the top of the one underneath. So I'm just adding a little bit of darkness there just so that it, it sort of shows that that is in the foreground really. And the same sort of here as well. It's, um, we don't want too much. We just need um, almost a, like a little sort of flick of color and a little bit of depth in the center. And that will just start lifting that. Let's say we don't want to do it too much and we can sort of clear our brush and sort of blend it in a little bit and it will just start bringing it all together. This is the bit I think which um, is the worst part in the sense that um, you want to enhance it, but you don't want it to stand out so much that it, um, you know, it looks really obvious. So trying to get that balance is quite difficult, um, but you'll find also once things dry, um, they do look quite different to when you're first putting it on. So don't panic too much if you're not happy on the first sort of lay down of colour and again I'm just sort of creating a sort of teardroppy shape but it is quite sort of uh, distorted if, if that makes sense just want to just try and add in those depths I say this will lighten slightly so don't don't worry too much and if it's too dark, then we'll add some more dark onto our cherry cobbler petals and that will sort of soften it slightly. So don't panic. And again, this one is on top of here. So I've just extended that very slightly just to add. Now you can see these are already dry and they're a lot lighter than what they were before. And add in more teardrop sort of shapes here. And again, you can build that colour up. So don't don't sort of go in too dark too quick. You can just build it up as you go. And again, you can change the shape of your leaf slightly. So if you feel that it isn't quite right, you can just add that little bit of detail. OK, I'm going to leave that for the time being just to let that dry and then I will come in and perhaps add some more of the cherry cobbler. Um, but what I do want to do is to create my centre. Now, um, if you look at the actual stamp itself, so if I show you the stamp, the centre of the flowers are almost like little balls, so they're really sort of... a uh, like tiny little circles. So what I'm doing is I'm just, with my dark, just creating 
some little circles now um, you don't need to be too precise because you can um, these will blend in these are all going to blend in together but I wanted to give it that star sort of look okay now what I'm going to do is to add a little bit of mango melody so this is this is quite bright so um, at first it will seem quite bright but we're going to blend all the colours together a little bit in a while so they will it will soften okay and then I'm going to add a tiny little bit of old olive and again this is just if you look at an actual poinsettia the centre parts are sort of a bit of a green and yellow not much I want it to sort of blend and then finally, I just with a clean brush, I'm just going to go over them all just very quickly, just to fill in any little gaps that might have appeared. I'm going to let it dry. So now once that's done, I'm going to let that dry to sort of um, enhance itself to sort of um, make sure it's all dry and settled. And then we can come back in on that centre if we need to, although I'm quite happy with that the way it is at the moment. So this is my cherry cobbler again. So again, I'm just going to bring in some darker elements just to those very centers. Again, don't be tempted to extend it the whole way of your petal unless you absolutely need to. Just kind of work it so that it will um, blend in naturally. And because I have got so I'm not sort of going the full length I am working each petal as I go hopefully I won't forget where I was this time okay so I think I'm quite happy with that now um let's say I will you continually look at it develop so you'll see how it starts to develop and how it starts to come um, lighter in places and darker in others sometimes you get a bit of a brush mark that you might want to get rid of or something like that I can see here I've got quite a dark edge here which I think I will want to blend um, but at the moment I'm going to let it dry because I don't want to keep adding to it okay so once we've done that, we're going to repeat it for the other side, but we're going to add two. So if I just move my blocks and my water out of the way. So again, I want to bring in my stamping sheet, my mask and my Sahara sand ink pad. Now remember, this is the whole stamp. So this is the whole of the flower. I want there to be a little gap in the middle here. So I'm just going to ink it up nicely, stamp off lightly, and then I'm going to add my first flower sort of here. I want a little gap, but I don't want too much. Okay, so now once I've done that, I'm going to mask this one here. Do exactly the same stamp off and then I'm going to add this one sort of here okay so now you can see that I've got the two flowers together so I'm going to paint those in exactly the same way as I've painted those and then I'm going to add my green leaves in exactly the same way so they'll be painted exactly the same I will start with the one which is over the top which is this one here and then I will go and do the one underneath so I will do those off camera because it will save us um, a little bit of time um, as I say it's exactly the same so I'm not doing anything different and then what I will do I will come in and I will show you how we add our detailed sort of background here and then how we use our um, shimmer paint to add these sort of um, splats and things that we've got on here okay so um, so I'll do that off camera and then I'll come back and show you once it's done
um, as you can see, I've finished these two flowers here. Um, I have made them quite a little bit darker in certain areas um, than this one. So you could sort of see the difference. I like a mixture of the colours because I think it's it's nature again. Some are darker, some are lighter. Um, but if you feel that you need to do them all the same, then that's absolutely fine as well. Um, I may add a little bit more darker into this one again, just to sort of blend them in a little bit more. But I wanted to cover the background with you now. So what I've got on my block is actually the um, Sahara sand. So it's exactly the same ink that we use to ink our images um, first. This is still a little bit damp on this side um, where I've just finished painting. So I'm going to leave that side and move over to here. As I say, I can always add in some more dark colours if I want to um, as I go forward. So I'm going to start off by filling in these uh, gaps in the middle. So I'm doing exactly the same and I'm laying down a really light sort of wash okay but straight away I'm going in with slightly darker into that center point and just dragging that down so as you can see it's darker in the center and then it peters out to lighter um, and then we're going to do this the whole way round these corner bits I'm not too worried about because they're going to be hidden. And the same here, you're not really going to see a great deal of this. But I just want to take it away because if it's left white, um, it will really show. So I'm just going to colour those. I'm not going to worry too much about shading or anything on there. So then what I want to do is to bring that colour round to the edges. So if you recall from my original, I sort of... Um, created this sort of wash outwards that got lighter and lighter as it went out until I was sort of happy to let sort of overall sort of effect really. So again I'm going to start exactly the same. I'm going to bring in some of that colour and I want to peter it out so it's quite light. Okay. Instantly I'm going to come in with the darker again. Then I want to make sure that it's watered down to bring it outwards. And I'm just going to sort of wiggle it out towards the edge of the page really. And again in the centre here. And I tend to try and flatten my brush a little and then kind of just wiggle it out. And as you're doing that, the ink is disappearing off your brush and you will naturally get a, a sort of shadow that it, it creates. If we get any harsh edges as we go out, then we can go back in with some more water um, just to dissipate that a little bit. So again, I'm just going in with a little bit more dark in that centre point, wiping my brush because I don't want it to spread too far out. So I want those to be quite dark in the centre because then that will make your flower pop. Okay, so I just water my brush and just spreading it out a little bit more. And it's the same again in the centre of the petals. And then we'll meet it this side when we do the other side. So don't worry too much at this stage that it's falling into that one. We want to just spread that out a little bit and almost take it down to nothing again. Sahara sand is a really good one to use for this because it's quite it's quite light. You can water it down quite substantially, um, but it just gives that nice sort of effect. It's easy to um, lose the edges on it, so it's sort of it's really soft. And 
and I think you'll agree this starts to give your flower a completely different look it's sort of um, when it's it's flat onto the surface it, it's sort of um, it is quite flat and it's qu quite um, it doesn't show as much I, I can't explain what I'm trying to say um, but it's kind of by doing this sort of background it kind of gives it a little bit of a lift this works really well for um, not just flowers but for anything really if you start um, sort of creating a bit of a shadow around it it makes it pop from your page You can't do a great deal wrong with this part, really, to be honest. It's, um, you know, it, it's kind of a anything goes type um, technique, really, for this part. So what I'm going to do is work this side. And then, as I say, I will go in that side and then we'll join them. And we'll just have a small section that's sort of like the white of the actual coloured paper. As this is a watercolour as well, you kind of, um, it doesn't matter too much if it if it's not perfect because a oh, watercolour by its very nature is quite soft. So, um, you know, it doesn't matter if it's not quite perfect. Now, remember that little piece of ink that I got on here earlier? I could have tried and lifted that, but I'm going to bring my colour around here. So I'm not too worried about it. I'm just laying down some colour now. And I'm going to go over the top of it and you'll see it automatically it will start to disappear. And you won't even notice it's there. Remember, that's going to be hidden, that corner piece anyway, so. But can you see, it's it's virtually disappeared. It's very, very light, and once this dries even more, you're not going to see that. Now, I've obviously got a line going down here, so I want to just soften that. So I'm just adding some more water, and then you can see that will start to soften and disappear. Now, again, I've got this first sort of layer down. I want it to dry because I want to see whether I need to develop it anymore, if there's any other places that it needs to be more added to it. So we'll leave that to dry. I'm going to move over to the other side. Exactly the same. Now, I'm just going to fill in the bits in the, in the centre. As I say, that's just to take the starkness off. You don't need to blend that really. It just it's to dull down that sort of creamy white colour that's coming <clears throat> that's coming through.
just by blotting it just enables you to um, take away sort of too much colour. Okay, so I'm quite happy with that. I might just go in with a little bit darker around this area just to finish off that edge here and also at that top edge there I think I might just add a little bit more so as I say you can go back in and just add some more colour if you feel it needs it so don't don't worry about um, sort of going back over what you've just done okay so I'm quite happy with that um, I am going to leave that flower slightly lighter because I think actually it all sort of blends in together really nicely so um, I'm going to leave that as it is um, now what I need to do is to add the um, splatter that I've used so if I bring in the card again you can see uh, this splatter I think it just finishes it off I think it makes it look really nice so I'm going to grab my um, frost white shimmer paint I'm going to move everything else out of the way for a second. This can get a bit messy, this part, so um, just be warned. Okay, so this is our all-purpose ink, and this is um, frost white, so it's got that lovely pearly sort of effect on it. Now, what you don't want to be doing is to use your good brush for this, so I'm going to pop my brush away so I don't get tempted. And you need to grab yourself um, a smallish brush, uh, not too small, but... Um, sort of a smallish sort of size in fact that's probably a little bit too small something this sort of size is prob probably okay that says it's a number five um, but you want an old brush so something that's not going to be used for your painting and then going to um, this is quite getting quite low this pot so I'm just going to pick up some of the paint if it was a fuller bottle I'd probably tip some into my lid here and what I want to do is I want to tap so you might want to practice this to start with I'm just tapping it over my work surface now as you can see it does get quite messy so you just want to you want some big blobs and some little blobs. So don't always start in the same place because if you start in the same place, you'll end up with all your big blobs and splats over one side and not over the other. You have very little control over where it goes. So uh, the trick is to try and just be a little bit sort of uh, gentle with it okay so I'm quite happy with that what I do need to do now is to allow this to completely dry um, it will take probably 15 to 20 minutes you can speed it up with a heat gun um, but the heat gun if you've got a big blob like this will actually make it bubble and then once it bubbles it's sort of it doesn't look quite the same so my recommendation is just to leave this completely to dry possibly even overnight um, and then I will show it to you in the frame once it's all done and you can see how it looks so I hope you've liked that it's um, it is quite a fun technique um, you don't have to add the splats if you don't want to I like the splats because I think it, it sort of makes it feel Christmassy um, and I think it, it's because it's got that pearlized effect on it which I don't know whether the camera picks up um it's absolutely beautiful so you know you do what you want on regards to that um but i hope the painting techniques may have helped you a little and um i look forward to seeing your creations okay i'll be back just to show you it once it's dry thanks then bye